So let's talk about how to release the quadricep muscles, really important structures. We're going to go through some releases of the muscles themselves, myofascial restrictions. We're also going to introduce some TCM things we can do to actually take restrictions out of there using acupuncture points. And I'll talk a bit about manipulation in terms of osseous structures and how important that is in actually working on the quads. So in terms of function, these are the primary knee extensors and they're critical for lower limb stability. Essential for walking, running, uh, just maintaining posture in general. So we're talking about the four quadriceps, we're talking about the rectus femoris, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and the intermedius, which is right underneath the rectus femoris. So in terms of the rectus femoris, this is the only quadricep muscle that crosses both the hip and the knee, aiding in hip flexion and knee extension. The vastus lateralis on the side here, this is the largest of the quad muscles responsible for lateral knee stability and extension. In terms of the vastus medialis on the inside, it supports the medial knee stabilizers. It's critical for patellar tracking down here. And the vastus intermedius lies beneath the rectus femoris and contributes to knee extension. In terms of the origin, the rectus femoris is all the way up in the anterior superior iliac spine, way up here. And the vastus muscles in general are going to connect right down into insert on the patellar viva, the quadriceps tendon, continuing as the patellar ligament to the tibia down here, to the tibial tuberosity. Now all of these muscles are innervated by the femoral nerve, so we're talking L2 to L4, and they're controlling knee extension and stability. So very, very important. So let's start out here with the rectus first. Okay, rectus femoris, take it in. Okay. Feeling that a bit? Yeah. Okay, and again. Now, we're gonna change this vector a little bit here. Take your foot, internal rotation. Feeling that a bit more? Oh. <laughs> yeah, a lot more. Back, and again, so we work all the way up from the knee, as high as we can. Back, one more time here, take it up. Okay, now. Let's go lateral, take it back, all right, pull it in, now do external rotation as much as you can, good, now do internal rotation, oh, feel that a lot, don't holy you? Holy cow. Yeah, all right, good, and again, you okay? Yeah. And again, good. Back, again, okay, in terms of the medialis, I'm going to get you to lie on your side, face towards the middle, please. Take this down here, good, this here, and then let's go up here, just get this out of it here, <laughs> yeah, take this in, okay, and in. Okay, again, are you okay? <laughs> oh my goodness, it's so tender. Okay, and again. Okay, and again. So we're gonna reverse this now, take it out. Not too bad there. Okay, and again. Okay, and again. So the interesting thing about this is when we start getting closer to the knee, yeah. if we actually want to take stress off the medial meniscus, we could do it right here by opening up the joint at the same time. You okay? Yeah. Okay. So, a lot of the restrictions that we would feel with the uh, intermediates underneath the rectus femoris, we could also address when we were in the sitting position there too. Good. Okay, let's get on a few points here. For the acupuncture points, you can actually stimulate using acupressure around the knee. For each of these points, we have made videos in great detail, so I'm not gonna get into too much of, you know, particulars of each point here. Otherwise, the whole video would be taken up with this. But I'm gonna mention a few points that can really help to address each of the areas 
And also I'm gonna show you a few other areas which really help with knee pain in general, but also to release the entire quadriceps. So one of the ones is just going to the side here, up from the patella, and that is stomach 34. So I'm gonna get on the area right there. How we doing, Mickey? That is tender. Yeah, you're gonna feel that. So if we were in there, we're feeling a restriction, which I do actually feel on you, we'd probably be on there for about 30 seconds to three minutes. We're not gonna spend too much time there. And then if we go to the medial side of the knee here, and we're gonna kind of just come up about one joint from there, and that would be spleen 10. That's pretty tender too? Yeah. Yeah. Just picking all the hot spots here. <laughs> okay. So 30 seconds or so, and that's really gonna help with the vastus medialis. Especially if the person is experiencing knee pain or having meniscus problems or the medial collateral ligament. There's a number of things this is gonna help with. A few other ones here would actually be down below in terms of the tibia. We could find the fibula, just go underneath there a bit, and this would be spleen 36. How are we doing there? That one's not bad. You don't feel that one too much. I don't, I don't feel much of a restriction there. Another one, if I turn this leg to the side here, at the popliteal crease just coming in the side there would be liver eight. Now that one you're gonna feel. Okay, are you okay? Yeah, that's tender. Now, when I get on these points, this is really gonna help to release tension around the entire knee, up the quadriceps, and you'll have increased blood flow to the area, the muscles will start to relax, and you'll see the patient actually has their pain decrease substantially. Now, there's another point that I wanna show you here, which is pretty important, and why this is really interesting is because it's actually the foot. Now, if we go down to the foot, and we go over in between the second toe here, we get into stomach 44, and I get on this point here. That is really painful, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, that point there can reduce pain throughout the entire leg, can also help with pro-inflammatory reactions throughout the body, and is really a powerful point. Now, like I said, we have individual videos on each one of these points, in addition to fascial expansions and you can see these on our YouTube channel. Go to the playlist so in terms of TCM, traditional Chinese medicine and fascial expansions, and you'll find the whole protocol in great detail. So one thing I want to talk about is osseous adjusting, which we usually don't associate with an injury to the quadricep. But if we look at the kinetic chain, we'll realize that everything that happens in the foot, the knee, the pelvis, is going to affect quadriceps. So first thing I'd probably do is I'd probably take a look at the SI joints and the lumbar spine, if there's any restrictions there, clean that up. I'd also get up and I'd look around the, the knee and I'd see whether or not there's any restriction. I mean, Mickey's got great mobility in her hips here, so that's not really an issue. If there was a restriction there, I may get in there. Kind of free it up a little bit. You okay? Mm -hmm. Drop this down. This just helps me to create a little bit of space in the joint. And I'd also check out the knee, make sure the Fibula is moving okay. Open up space between the femur and the tibia. Doing okay there? Yeah. No problems there. And I'd also look down around the ankle and make sure we don't have any restrictions. I mean, she's got good dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. Going through the different areas, if I found any kind of restrictions in mobility, then I would address those specific joints, looking down at the cuboid, looking at the toes themselves. And I'm not seeing any restrictions there. But the point being, I would make sure that I address all of these issues if I found any restrictions in there. Otherwise, you're really not gonna get the results you think you are. So very, very important.